Hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay. Hi. I'm finally on. Sorry about that delay. I hope everyone's doing well today. If you would um, go ahead and type your first name into the chat for me. And then um, if you have a nickname, if you wouldn't mind um, putting that next to your name as well, I would appreciate that. And that way I can get to know everybody's preferred nickname. All right, very good. All right. So, yeah, so I had a little bit of trouble getting onto Zoom, but I'm here now, so that's good. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. I can see um, that several of you have um, gone through the start here module in Canvas, which is great. I've gotten more student surveys. And I've also seen that um, several of you have posted onto our introductions board, which is wonderful. Thank you very much. If you haven't done those things yet, you're just gonna wanna get those um, done over the next day or two. Um, just go into Canvas, into our course, and then um, into the very first module, which is called Start Here. And you'll be on your way. Um, so, oh, that's great. I can see several people who've got um, preferred nicknames, which is wonderful. That's very helpful to me. So what I'm gonna do first is ask if anybody has any questions or problems they've encountered or um, issues at all with anything we talked about last time, um, anything that you've done on Canvas since then, any questions at all? Um, I actually had a question. Yeah. So um, about the quiz that we have for our lecture videos. Yes. Um, I know that you said it was due Friday night, but it says it's due tonight at 11.59. Oh, it so does. You mean like Friday at like midnight or because um, I wasn't sure. If I intended for it to be due Friday by midnight. So 1159 p.m. is how uh, Canvas lists midnight. Um, I will double check that when we're done today. OK, um, so Friday, exactly. um, it's definitely Friday for the due date for that. Thank you okay. for putting that out to me. Sometimes I miss things on canvas that um are not set up quite the way i wanted mm -hmm. okay I really yeah right that. now it just says due february 18th at 11 59 so i don't know like you know because technically like that is friday but i wasn't sure if you meant fr oh, it is. yeah okay so remember right. 11 59 so that's a minute before midnight that's the other thing i try not to set due times for 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. because that can be confusing. Um, for midnight, of course, it's actually 12 a.m. and noon is 12 p.m. But sometimes students get those confused. So that's why we use 11.59 p.m. <laughs> as midnight. Um, so uh, yeah, I try to make it as least, uh, as least confusing as possible. Um, I think, what the question was was on canvas it's saying it's due tonight at midnight she didn't yes, know I, meant and that. i'll adjust that i'll adjust okay. that okay because so i really did friday i intended it to be friday yeah all right okay all right good and remember the uh laboratory questions are um due on sunday at midnight and that's um, how it is throughout the semester. Um, I, I typically have those due on Sundays um, by midnight again. Of course, you're welcome to hand them in as soon as they're done. Um, you just want to try to get them to me before midnight. 
And remember, if you ever get in a jam and you can't get something in before the due date and time, just send me a message through Canvas. Um, I'm happy to work with you and give you an extension uh, when you need it. Okay, just stay in touch with me there. That'd be great. All right, very good. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to um, share a screen with you. If you bear with me just a minute. Not quite that one. This one. All right, let me try this one more time. Okay. So you should be seeing on your screen our homepage on Canvas. Uh, so it says microbio for health professionals or an, a shortened form of health professionals. Um, so again, this is our homepage. This is what I want you to think of as our home base. And um, this is the place to come visit um, when you want to get access to any of these links here. Um, and then remember, always go into modules. And this is where you'll find everything organized week by week. Um, remember that in this course, any of the sort of uh, written file material that we use will be available to you here on Canvas in these week by week modules. But anything that's in a video format will be up on YouTube. So you can see for this week, um, as always, there's a to do list for us. Um, you're going to find the slides that are used in our lecture videos um, here on Canvas. You're also gonna find the slides that I use in laboratory are here. Here's our lecture quiz this week. And um, here's the, again, lab slides, lab questions. Well, hold on just one second here. Okay. So I have materials up for next week because again, I, I try to keep them posted in advance for us by about a week so that in case anybody wants to try to get ahead um, because of work schedules or something like that, they're welcome to do that. So um, the last time we were together, we went through these slides that were regarding biosafety in the laboratory. What we're gonna be doing today is watching a video together that is about um, how we take care of and how we use our light microscopes. Um, unfortunately, you're not sitting in front of a microscope, so I, I can't get your hands on the microscope. But what I'll do is um, show you this, basically a demonstration video that points out the names of all of the controls on the scope that we all need to be familiar with and also that walks us through the steps that we use to bring an object into focus using a light microscope. Um, again, until you really get your hands on a scope and practice these steps, um, it's hard to get experience with this. But once you do get some experience and you, you learn by doing with microscopes, um, once you get your hands on one and you have the ability to practice and practice and practice, these sort of things become second nature. But I recognize that some of us have more experience than others in terms of having the opportunity to use a microscope, to handle a microscope and focus in on objects that are on the microscope slide. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you again. See if I could do this relatively easily. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, pull up a video for us <clears throat> that's posted up on YouTube. Bear with me. All right, all right, let's see if I can get this to work here. All right, 
So what you should be seeing on your slide right now is an image of a Leica microscope with a dust cover on it. <laughs> and it's sitting on my counter in my kitchen. <clears throat> so again, we're gonna watch this video together. And what I'd like you to do is take notes as you watch. And also um, if you have any questions, um, to jot those down because when we're finished watching this and it's about 26 minutes long um, we can talk about anything that wasn't clear or anything you have questions about in most laboratories the kind of microscope that's used is a compound binocular light microscope when the dust jacket is removed from the scope, we can see its basic structures. So microscopes have a base where the, it sits on the surface, a stage where the slide is placed, an arm, sometimes with a handle like this one has, and a body tube, which helps transport the light from the base up to the sample. Microscopes are also going to have some kind of an electrical cord on them because that's going to supply the power for the light source. There are lots of controls that we need to be familiar with on the microscope, starting, of course, with the light source control. Light is going to come up through the base of the scope and through two structures, the iris diaphragm right here and the condenser. The iris diaphragm is gonna determine how much light comes in. And you can see you can adjust that for the lens you're using. And the condenser is going to focus that light up through your specimen sitting on the slide on the stage. It's important that you remember the condenser underneath, this, underneath the stage so that your light source is correct for the lens you're using. There are controls underneath the right side of the stage that will help move your slide around on the stage and move the stage itself. It's critical when you place a microscope slide onto the stage that you seat it into these silver clips here because those will hold the slide steady while you move the stage or move the slide itself. Remember, a compound microscope has multiple objective lenses available for us to use. On this black ring structure, there are grooves that we can hold on to and rotate which lens we want in place at any one time. On any compound microscope, there's going to be a series of lenses ranging from a low power lens, typically either a 4x or 5x, and we have a 4x here, moving up to either a 10x or a 20x lens. Then up even further to a 40x lens, and then finally to the oil immersion lens, which is a 100x lens. It magnifies the object on the slide 100 times. Now, you should note that the 40x lens is a lens called the high dry lens. It's a high powered lens, relatively speaking, at 40x magnification, but we use it dry. In other words, we don't put any oil on the slide with a 40x lens. The only lens that uses oil with it is the 100x lens. In fact, you can only use that lens with oil. So we always have to be very careful when we're rotating our objective lenses, not to accidentally rotate the 100x lens in place. That lens is designed, when it's rotated in place, to come in 
just on top of the microscope slide. And if there's no oil on the slide, you will scratch the lens. And that brings us to the eye pieces of the microscope. These eye pieces are quite flexible. They're able to be moved farther apart from each other or closer together, depending upon the user. It's tempting when you're using a binocular microscope to keep one eye closed, but they are designed to be used with both eyes open. And in order to see a singular field of vision under the microscope, you need to have the two eye pieces spaced correctly for your eyes. Everybody's eyes are a different distance apart from each other. And that's why modern microscopes have the functionality to move the eye pieces farther apart or closer together. The other thing to note about the eye pieces is that one of them is going to be individually adjustable, like this one on the right. What this means is that you can focus the right eye piece separately from the left. So if you have complex vision problems, if you wear certain types of glasses, for example, that help with different vision problems in each eye. A modern compound microscope will compensate for that. You can focus the scope for your left eye using the primary controls, and then you can make adjustments for your right eye directly on the right eyepiece. Modern microscopes can compensate for almost any vision problem that the user might have. One other thing to note, if you wear eyeglasses like I do, when you use a microscope, you take your eyeglasses off. The microscope is capable of making all the adjustments that you need to bring a specimen into focus. When you're ready, you take your microscope slide with your specimen on it, place it into the silver clips on the stage, and then using the controls underneath the right side of the stage, move the slide directly underneath your objective lens. You can see here that I've now turned on the light source at the base of the scope, and there's a beam of light coming up from the bottom through the sample on the slide and into the eye pieces. We control the amount of light coming up through the slide using this wheel on the left side of the base of the scope. It's important to remember that the amount of light that you will need to comfortably view a specimen on a microscope slide depends on which objective lens you're using. The lower the power of the lens, the less light you will need. The higher the power of the lens, the more light you will need. So we are constantly adjusting the amount of light that we are running through the sample on our slide. The single most common problem that students have when they're learning how to use a microscope is learning how to focus. The question I get most often from students is how do I bring the sample on my slide into focus? And the answer that I give to them is that you're going to follow the same series of steps every single time you examine a slide. You're going to do the same thing every single time until you get really good at it. What you don't want to do when you're trying to focus on a specimen is just jump in 
and start wildly moving your control knobs that are found here on the right side of the scope. These are your coarse and fine adjustment knobs. The coarse adjustment, the larger wheel here, is literally moving the stage up and down, closer to the lens and farther away from the lens. These are big movements when you are looking through the eyepieces. The fine adjustment knob, the smaller wheel here, is the one that's going to make the final adjustments in your ability to bring your specimen into focus. You want to begin the process of focusing on an object with your fingers on the coarse knob, not the fine knob. Let's talk about the steps that we take every single time when we want to bring a specimen into focus. Once your slide is securely in place in the clips on the stage, with the beam of light visibly passing through the sample on the slide, rotate the lowest power lens into place. And again, on our scope, it's this very small objective lens that you can see here with a red line around it. Ours is a 4X lens. That lens is capable of magnifying the object on the slide four times. Now note that that's not the total magnification that we're using. The eyepieces on a microscope also magnify the image. The eyepieces magnify 10 times. So in order to determine the total magnification that we're using, we have to multiply the magnification of the objective lens times the magnification of the eyepieces. So using this low power lens, we are magnifying that specimen four times 10 or 40 times. Rotate the stage upwards with the course adjustment knob until the slide is as close as possible to the low power lens. Now, start looking through the eyepieces and slowly rotate the course adjustment knob downwards. You have to do this while you're looking through the eyepieces. As you do this, you're gonna see an image appear and then quickly disappear in front of your eyes. In other words, as you rotate the stage downwards, you're going to come into focus and then quickly out of focus with the course adjustment knob. At that point, bring the stage back up until you see that image and then reach for the fine knob. It's the fine adjustment knob that will do the work, that last step of bringing the image into focus for you. Modern microscopes are par focal. And what that means is, once you have your image in focus on the low power lens, you can move to the next lens with only fine adjustments needed. You can go from lens to lens to lens, and the image will still be essentially in focus for you. Again, you'll probably need to make some very fine adjustments, but you don't have to begin the whole process of focusing all over again. The term we use for that is par focal. We do the focusing process once on the low power lens, and then we can rotate through the next power and then the next power with only fine adjustments needed. 
you can see that the 40x lens is in place right now in the image. Remember, we call this one the high dry lens. And for many of the things that we examine in a microbiology lab, we can see them under this 40x lens. So bacteria and eukaryotic microbes like fungi and algae and protozoans, we can see under a 40x lens. Remember, if you're asked to determine the total magnification for a 40x, it would be 40 times 10. 40x from the objective lens, 10x from the eyepiece. 40 times 10, or 400x total magnification. Remember, there's one more lens on the microscope, and that's the oil immersion lens. That's the 100x lens. The combination of the 100x lens and the eyepiece, 100 times 10, brings us to a total magnification of 1000x when we use the oil immersion lens. We achieve the best detail for microbial specimens when we use the 100x oil immersion lens. We can see basic structure using the 40x high dry lens. In other words, you can see the shape of a bacterial cell using the 40x lens, but you won't be able to get any more detail than that unless you use the 100x oil immersion lens. So it's important that as students of microbiology, we know how to use the 100x lens correctly. And that's what we'll talk about next. Your image is in focus under 40x. Rotate about halfway between the 40x lens and the 100x lens. Using that black wheel again, rotate away from the 40x but not all the way to the 100x. Stop about halfway between them. Now you need to apply the oil. There's lots of immersion oil products on the market. This one happens to be what we use in our teaching laboratory. This is the Resolve immersion oil product. And one of the reasons that I like it is because it uses a, a stick applicator to place one or two drops of oil on the slide. The biggest problem that students have when they place oil on a microscope slide when they're learning is that they tend to place too much oil. The stick applicator in this kind of product helps prevent that pull the stick out of the bottle, you can see oil will run down the stick to the end and you'll get a nice drop. That is what needs to go on your slide directly where the beam of light is. One, maybe two drops only. Just gently touch the stick down towards the slide and you'll get a nice droplet of oil right where you need it. Then you're going to rotate your lens down into place. If you recall what we said earlier, the 100x oil immersion lens is designed to come in on top of the slide, almost touching it. It's designed to slide in place so that it is literally right on top of the slide. You're gonna feel like the slide is gonna break if you rotate that lens into place. But don't worry, if you have carefully focused your specimen, when you rotate that lens down onto the slide, 
it will be in the exact correct place. Remember, it's perfectly fine to do a little bit of fine focus adjustment when your oil lens is in place. You're not going to break the slide if you use your fine adjustment knob. But be warned, if you accidentally start using your coarse adjustment knob, you will break the slide. And anybody who does work in a laboratory using a microscope has broken a few slides accidentally. Once you've finished examining your specimen using the oil immersion lens, it's not possible to go back to the lower power lenses. You now have oil on your slide. And if you were to rotate the 40X or the 20X lens back into place, you would get oil on those lenses. Now it's not the end of the world. You can clean those lenses if you accidentally get oil on them. But even without oil on them, the lower powered lenses will not be able to see what's on the slide as long as there's oil on the slide. The lower power lenses are designed to be used in air. They will not be able to focus on a specimen if there is oil on the slide. So the best practice is to finish your work using the 40X lens before you go up and use the oil immersion lens. Plan your work so that once you're finished examining the specimen with the oil immersion lens, you're finished with that slide. Now you need to clean up your scope and put it away. If there's one thing that you will find in every single laboratory, it's these boxes of Kim wipes. These little green boxes are ubiquitous and we use Kim wipes for all kinds of little cleanup jobs around the lab. But the one thing you don't want to do with a Kim with a Kim wipe is try to clean off an objective lens. Kim wipes are not designed to be used on any kind of a delicate lens. If you took a Kim wipe and tried to clean off, for example, an oil immersion lens, you would scratch that lens. So don't reach for the Kim wipes when it's time to clean up your microscope. Instead, reach for lens paper. This happens to be Fisher brand lens paper. There's all different kinds of lens paper available. Lens paper is simply a very fine, very soft type of paper that has been made specifically for the uses on very fragile, very delicate objective lenses. So you can take a piece of lens paper and you can wipe off a dry objective lens. For example, if you think it might have dust on it, you can use lens paper to wipe off eye pieces if they accidentally get dusty or they get some kind of a smear on them from somebody's fingerprint. You can clean off uh, down on the base of the scope where the light source is if dust collects down there. Lens paper can be used on any type of glass or any type of lens to help keep it clean. If you've used the oil immersion lens with oil, however, you're going to want to take the extra step of using a lens cleaning fluid with your lens paper. Simply place a few drops of lens cleaner onto a piece of lens paper and you're ready to go. Now, it's hard to reach an oil immersion lens when it is rotated into place. So you're going to have to do that halfway rotation between the 40X and 100X lens. And you're going to have to rotate the stage down in order to have the room for your hand to get in there with your lens paper and lens cleaner to appropriately clean your lens. 
once you're at that halfway point, just gently wipe off the surface of the lens with your lens cleaner. It will take off all that oil and get the, rent, the lens ready for the next time you need to use it. I always tell students to live by the golden rule in the laboratory. And by that, I mean, leave the equipment the way you want to find it. So yes, you should always clean off your oil immersion lens before you put your microscope away. But do yourself a favor and clean off the other lenses as well. Clean off the eyepieces. Clean off the light source glass. If you do this and then you put your scope away, you know that your scope is going to be clean and ready to go the next time you use it. So, like I said, whenever you use your microscope in a laboratory, do the right thing, clean it up, and it will be ready for the next person who needs to use it. Once the lenses are clean, rotate the low power lens into place, and then using the coarse adjustment knob, rotate the stage all the way down as far as it will go till it's sitting on top of the condenser. Bring the eyepieces as close together as possible and turn off the light source. Wrap the power cord around the base so that it is safely tucked away and then place the dust cover over the scope. It's really important to keep a microscope covered when it sits in the laboratory because dust really easily accumulates on those glass surfaces. So keeping it covered when it's not in use will make your job easier the next time you need to use it. Hello everyone. Whoops, sorry Let's get about started. that. Just running into the next one. All right. So some basic information about our microscopes. Light microscopes are the most common microscopes that you will encounter um, if your professional work has you in any kind of a laboratory setting. So in a, for example, in a research laboratory or in a hospital-based laboratory or a laboratory that's in a doctor's office, or a dentist's office, um, it's the light microscope that will be um, available for use. Um, there are other types of microscopes and we are gonna talk about those in lecture, but it's the light microscope we use most often for most of the work we do, including microbiology type work. Um, a scope, a modern objective, uh, sorry, compound um, binocular microscope, runs about three or $4,000 approximately. So they're expensive pieces of equipment and you have to treat them with care. Um, one thing to remember, for example, um, that's not in that video is that anytime you have to move a microscope, you wanna make sure that you hold it very close to your body. You don't wanna hold it out away from you. You wanna hold it up against yourself while you're walking. And when you place it down, you want to uh, place it very gently onto the surface. You don't want to sort of bang it onto the surface. Objective lenses are very fragile. Um, when you need to move a microscope on a desktop, you don't want to pull it across the desk. You want to lift it and then gently place it wherever you want it to be. If you were to drag a microscope by the handle across a surface like a desktop, you would vibrate the objective lenses and that can knock them out of uh, focus. That can knock them out of place. So again, you just wanna treat it as though it's a very delicate instrument because those lenses really are quite delicate and they are very expensive to repair or replace. 
So, um, so it's very helpful to know how to handle a scope and how to take good care of it. A um, couple of things I wanted to mention um, that may or may not have been clear to you in the video because it went by quickly. Um, there are actually three controls that will determine how much light reaches your eyes when you're using a microscope. Obviously, there's a light source, and that little wheel down on the base of the microscope, that's the one that you roll back and forth to get more or less light. That's the most obvious light control. But there are two other things that will control the light that reaches your eyes, and we can't forget about those <laughs> because they're fully adjustable. So underneath that stage, underneath the black stage, the one that's the farthest down is called the iris diaphragm. And that's going to control um, how much of the light that the light source is providing is going to be allowed to go up through the specimen. From the iris diaphragm, the light passes through that tool or that um, control called a condenser. And the condenser can be adjusted according to which lens you're using. The condenser is going to help focus the light. It's going to focus that beam, which has come out of the light source and has gone through the iris diaphragm and now through the condenser, it will be focused in on that um, slide, right at the level of the slide so that you're going to get the best beam of light you can get. So it's very easy for us to forget the iris diaphragm and the condenser because they're under the stage, we just don't see them. We have to go down and adjust those if we're having any kind of issues um, with the light um, that's reaching the slide. Uh, let's see, um, that term par focal that was mentioned, par focal, that's the term we use to describe uh, what these modern scopes are capable of in terms of focusing abilities. We only have to focus one time from start to finish. And we do that at the low power lens. Once we're in focus in low, on the low power lens, we can rotate to the next highest lens and our object is still gonna be basically in focus. You don't have to start all over again, in other words. Now you will have to do a little fine adjusting each time you move between lenses, but just a little. You won't have to start all over again. <laughs> so having a par focal microscope is a real time saver. And modern compound microscopes have that ability. Um, let's see, it's a couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, the objective lenses that you know are, are available on a microscope hanging down under that black wheel, it's very tempting when you change from one lens to another, it's very tempting to do it by grabbing the lens, just holding on to that silver tube and turning to the next tube. But try to stop yourself from doing that. It's much better to grab that black plastic wheel and turn from lens to lens using that. If you grab the silver tube lenses and you, ro you rotate them that way, you run the risk that you're gonna ro uh, loosen that lens over time. Again, very, very delicate lenses. So we try not to you know, handle them any more than we absolutely have to. That's a, another good uh, practice to remember. Um, and I wanna say a couple things about um, magnification, because this comes up again and again in this particular course. Remember, all compound light microscopes are going to have four lenses. They're going to have a low power lens, and that's going to be either a 4x or a 5x. It depends on the company making the scope. Then there's going to be sort of a mid range lens. And those are either 10x or 20x. Then you get to the 40x lens. All scopes have a 40x lens on them. 
That's the high dry lens. And then the oil immersion lens, the 100X lens. Now this is a microbiology class. So what we're looking at primarily are bacteria. Now we do sometimes look at eukaryotic microbes. Remember the fungi, algae, protozoa, things like that. But the majority of what we look at every day are bacteria. And remember, bacteria are very, very small. Prokaryotic cells are generally one or two micrometers in diameter. Remember, there are a thousand micrometers in one millimeter. So they're very, very small. We cannot see bacteria under the low power lens. We can't even see them under the 20X lens. We have to go to a minimum of 40X, the high dry to see bacteria on a slide. And then the best view we're gonna get is under the 100X lens. Remember, you cannot see viral particles using a light microscope. So if I'm using the 100X lens and I see little tiny dots on the slide, it's tempting to think that those might be viral particles, but they're not, they're not. You cannot see them under a light microscope. They're too small. And unfortunately the detail, the level of detail that we get for bacteria really isn't that great even under 100X we will see some details and we're gonna have an opportunity this semester to look at a lot of um, slides, a lot of images of bacteria that were taken through the 100X lens. So you get accustomed to that. But it's important to know that we can't see the molecular structures in a bacterial cell using a light microscope. So, we can't see the peptidoglycan layer. We can't differentiate where the membrane is. We can't see the ribosomes inside of the cell. Remember, there are no organelles in bacteria because it's a prokaryotic organism. Really what we're seeing is shape, size, things like that and some fine detail related to the outer sort of edges of that cell. It's important to know that you would have to go up to an electron microscope if you wanted to see the real interior details of a bacterial cell. It's also important to know that where you can and can't see bacteria because you know, for example, that if you're under the 4X lens, the low power lens, and you see a, a nice cell in front of you, you already know something. You know that it's not bacteria. Under the low power lens, that would have to be a eukaryotic cell because eukaryotic cells are about 10 times larger than prokaryotic cells. So maybe it's a yeast cell, or maybe it's a protozoal cell or an algal cell, but it's not bacteria under the 4X lens. And knowing those things can be really helpful in the micro lab, because a lot of what we're doing is looking at samples that we don't know what's in them. We're trying to figure it out. You know, if we get a patient sample, if we get, for example, a urine sample, or a blood sample or some other type of body tissue or body fluid. And we're being asked to determine if it's in, contaminated with any microbes. It's very helpful to know what can and cannot be seen at different magnifications. It really helps us in our hunt to determine what these microbes might be and what they might not be. So a couple of um, useful things to know. About the, uh, about the light microscope. So um, let me open it up here. Does anybody have any questions 
about what you've heard regarding caring for the scope and using the scope? Any terms you were unsure of or? I was just a little confused on like the parts of the microscope that emit light. Um, yeah. Like the different, like why are there three? So the, so let me, let me go through them again and everybody can make sure they've got them in their notes, okay? So we have a, a, a source of light, essentially a light bulb in the scope. You plug the scope in, you turn it on, the light bulb is gonna light up, all right? That's what we call the light source. And that little wheel on the base is going to either turn that up or down. And that's coming up from the base. If you were to just have the light source, you would still probably be able to see your specimen fine. But, and, and in fact, old scopes, old fashioned scopes only had a light source. That's all they had. But what we have in our modern scope is the ability to alter that beam of light a little bit. So the, what the iris diaphragm does is um, the word diaphragm and uh, refers to something that can open and close in a circle. And just like your iris surrounds your pupil and determines how big your pupils are, the iris diaphragm is, is determining how big this circle is gonna be underneath the stage. So how much of that beam of light is gonna be allowed up. So we generally say that the iris diaphragm controls how much light in terms of that big light beam is gonna be allowed up into the uh, microscope slide and into the sample. Then what the condenser does <laughs> is it takes the beam that has now been narrowed or widened by the iris diaphragm and it focuses it so that it hits the object on the slide perfectly. That is gonna help us as we try to focus and we try to see this object under those lenses. Having that light focused in so that the rays of light are hitting the object um, as efficiently as possible, that's gonna help us. We're not gonna have a lot of stray light um, when we use our condenser correctly. So, um, so yeah, it's a little bit of technical knowledge about how a scope works, but um, all three of those controls will determine how much light gets to our eyes. And the reason we need to know about those is because sometimes when you're working on a scope, depending on who might have used it before you did, <laughs> um, you'll put your slide in and you'll, you'll try to focus in and you'll be having trouble because you can't quite get the light right. And a lot of people will just try to turn that wheel and get more or less light. And it's frustrating because sometimes that won't do it. The, the image just doesn't look right to your eyes. And if that happens, you need to know that you can adjust the iris diaphragm and you can adjust the condenser. And you can get, um, you can get a much better view of your object, whatever it is that you're um, examining on your microscope slide. Good question. So there's a base. The base is what the microscope is sitting down on, on the surface. Then there's gonna be that arm. And sometimes the arm has a handle on it. Sometimes it doesn't. And then there's what we call the body tube, which is carrying um, the image up to our eyes from, from the um, level of the objective lens up to our eyes. That's the body tube. The eye pieces are what we're looking through. And of course the um, slide itself is sitting on the stage underneath the objective lenses. Anything else? Any other questions? We're gonna use all this terminology, particularly 
um, regarding the different types of lenses, um, every time we look at slides this semester, every time I show you some slides, I'm gonna let you know what lens the image was taken through. We'll talk about what that total magnification is. Remember, we always have to multiply the power or the strength of the lens by 10 if we wanna know the total magnification because those eyepieces are also magnifying the image for us. Good. Anything else? All right, good. So what I wanna do um, before I let you go, I'll let you go early tonight. Um, I just wanna pull back up our Canvas page for just a moment. Give me just a sec here. All right, so you should see, um, you should be looking at um, on your screen at the modules page from our Canvas course. Um, and I'm just scrolling down and taking a look at next week, just as we're moving forward here. If I click on our to-do list for next week, Next week, um, as usual, we have two different lecture topics, but next week is a little unusual because we have three separate quizzes. This is the only week in the semester when this happens, but I wanted to make sure you had a heads up for this. The first lecture topic that you'll be looking at next week is called History of Microbiology and science of microscopy. So it's um, basically two shorter topics that we combine together into one lecture. But since they're each their own topic, we do a separate quiz. So next week, instead of having two quizzes, you have three, they're worth five points each like usual. The history and the science quizzes are due by Wednesday at midnight. The cell is due by Friday at midnight. This again is the only week that this happens. That's why I wanted to call your attention to it. In terms of our Zoom meetings next week, we are gonna meet on Tuesday and we'll be talking about what's called aseptic technique in the microbiology lab. But make sure you uh, jot down that there is no Zoom meeting on Thursday next week. So you'll have that time available to do other work that you might need to do. And then you'll have, again, you know, a typical lab assignment that'll be due Sunday at midnight. And of course, you'll want to take, you know, good notes for yourself while you're looking at the, that lecture material. Um, up on our playlist. All right. Anything else? Anything else um, anyone wants to ask about or um, anything at all? Remember that all our Zoom meetings get recorded, so I post those on our playlist. So if you want to um, go back and look at any part of that uh, video about the microscopes, you can do that. You can pull up the lab video and watch a few minutes here and there if you need to. Um, you're all set now to do your lab homework for this weekend. Um, again, it's not a, it's not a long or difficult assignment. Um, it's just to make sure that you're um, keeping up with the lab material, that your notes are all set, that you understand everything that we talked about, the key points. Anything else at all that I can help? Okay. All right, very good. Very good. Well, I'm gonna let you go. 
Um, message me if you have any questions about anything. Um, and um, if nothing else comes up, I will see you on Tuesday next week. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. You too.